Good morning, Jay First Baptist Church and those that are watching from um, from either outside our, our area or around town. Um, I'm here once again with you, as I said every day this week, about the 10 o'clock hour. Sorry, I'm a little bit over. I was on the phone with with an individual who works for the Florida Baptist Convention and deals with our dental bus. Uh, just let, let me just mention this right now. If things subside and are and and we're allowed to be more socializing again, and this coronavirus is passed, we are still going to be doing uh, our dental bus here at the church. Everything is still in place, you know. So we just have to pray that this that the Lord will allow this and and, and move this uh, this pandemic away, and may we get through this quicker than sooner than later. But uh, th- this morning, I was talking with uh, with Brother Mark Johnston, who is who is the person in charge with the Florida Baptist of the dental bus, and we had a nice conversation. And that's why I'm running a little bit late this morning. But uh, we are still looking at at our continuing ministries. And while I'm talking about ministries, let me still remind all of us in the church: if you have needs for food, let's say you have lost a job or you're just struggling right, right now. We have we have a food pantry, and if you are a church member especially, just call the office or call my cell phone, which is 407-399-0. We will be willing to help you as much as we can um, and, and help meet your needs. And if you're in the community, maybe you're not a member here at the church, or you, and you're struggling, call our office, 850-675-675. 4587 we will try to meet up with you if you can't get an answer there we're usually here in the mornings uh try try my cell phone once again 407-399-0688 we will try our very very best in helping you meet those needs we do have a food pantry we are still using that and we're still doing that as our outward ministry currently we are not having our clothes closet for those who have come in the past and we are not doing manna currently. Manna has shut their operations down in their in their satellite places, but they are still serving meals and giving out food in Pensacola. But we will help meet your needs, if possible, through our food pantry. And then, too, as I said earlier, uh, the Lord willing, this this pandemic uh, subsides that we our next major outreach into, into the community is our dental bus and that is in the very end of July this year so so we're 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 not closing down all the way you know that you have to understand something and very very interesting i saw this picture and i saw this post earlier a, a number of weeks ago that says the church is not the building the church are the people and j first baptist church is not closed now our building might be not not being used for services or that, at least not where everybody congregates because of the pandemic. But we are still the church. You are still the church, and I will continue to lead here, and and we will do the very best we can in helping meet needs. I am still calling people. I know our deacons have been calling individuals, checking to see how you're doing. And if you have a if you have a pressing need, call me. I've had some nice conversations with some of the church members in recent days, and it varies in all different all different things. And I will tell you, to me, if that's what I can do to help you, I will try my best to to, to be available. And and I desire for you to not only make it through this time, but to flourish. You know the one one of the pastors that that I have contact with um, via texting and that he made the statement that his church is looking at 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 really concentrating on building the family relationship up spiritually and just socially t- together and this is a time for that you know this is a time like stepping back into history when there wasn't the television where people would sit around maybe the radio. And hear a radio, uh, a radio story like the Green Hornet or some of those others I've listened to, or Sherlock Holmes. But but there was more social interaction. It wasn't uh, it wasn't just putting your face in your cell phone and texting or 
or playing a video game. And, and I'm not condemning those things. Those are part of our times, and I, I don't have a problem with that. But take some time to just spend together. I know in our household, uh, we've been cooking. We've been cooking a lot of meals, and we've not gone out to eat in that. And uh, we want to support our restaurants, but we've been hesitant to kind of take what we have at the house and and just stay at home, as, as the president has asked us to do, as the governor has asked us to do. And we want to oblige to that because we don't want the spread of this of this coronavirus to hit our community as it has other communities. And I do know in this rural community, in the setting we live in, there's probably less chance. But we still need to be vigilant in in putting this social distancing and trying our best to abide by the guidelines we've been given. And especially for many in our church. And, and if I just want to read from from that I that I downloaded. And this is under section one, safer at home. And I, and I, I read this yesterday. I want to read it again. The senior citizens and individuals with, with a significant underlying medical condition, such as chronic lung disease, moderate to severe asthma, serious heart conditions, I- immunocompromised status, cancer, diabetes, severe obesity, renal failure, liver disease, shall stay at home and take all measures to limit the risk of exposure to COVID-19. And truly, these are individuals, and you could fall in any of these categories or maybe multiple categories here, that we need to be very careful. And as your pastor, I desire for the very best for you. I care about you, and I and I desire Christ's love in your life, and I just want the very best for you. And if I can help in this way of helping you have a better idea how to stay protected during this tough time. Um, that's my desire. Now let's get to, to the Word of God just for a few moments. I'm looking at the first letter of the Paul of Paul to Timothy. This was uh, one of his protégés. He, he, was, he was mentoring Timothy. Timothy was a young pastor. And in chapter 1, it's Paul starts out, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, our God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. To Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought you to abide still at Ephesus, and when I went into Macedonia, that you might charge some that they teach no other doctrine, and endless genealogies, neither give heed to fables, and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Then I want to jump down to verses 15 and 16. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptations, expectations, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners whom I am chief. However, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Uh, I, I read these two sections of two sections of verses together to, to point out two parts of this walk with Christ. And Paul is encouraging Timothy to first avoid the things that cause confusion. Stick with the doctrines that edify in faith. Now, it doesn't mean don't read passages in the Bible that possibly are genealogies in that. that. That's part of reading the Bible. I know many of us are reading the Bible through an entire year, and that's part of the Bible. God put that in the Bible for that. But I think what Paul is getting at is don't just focus on that as, a, as just a way of worship by just repetition and not really seeing the importance of the doctrines of God. There are many religions today that just repeat and repeat. They're they're basically vain repetitions. And yet God, through the workings of Paul and the teachings of Paul, is telling Timothy, basically, those are not the things to to focus on. Yes, know them. Yes, we should yes, we should be aware of them. That God has put in the Bible list of names of people that he wants us to to at least know know something about. But the focus on our training and teaching in the services that we participate in should be the focusing 
on the doctrines that bring us stronger in our faith. It's very, very interesting. You know, I'm, I am, I'm not, a, as I said, I'm not against reading various parts of the Bible. And I know there's a trend today with some individuals and some very, very, um, uh, how, how we would say, important pastors that have large, large churches that have said, we don't need the Old Testament. All you need is Jesus. Well, yes, Christ gives us our salvation, but we have a whole Bible. And many times the New Testament doctrines that we were given in the Gospels by Christ himself, by the apostles in, in the epistles, and, and all throughout the New Testament, many of them are based on Old Testament doctrines and statements. And to get the fullness of the New Testament, to know the Old Testament. Now, I'm not saying take things out of, out of context in the Old Testament. Many do that also. They take the blessings that are offered to Israel under the Abrahamic covenant, and they say everybody gets it because we supplant the church for Israel. I don't believe that's what the Bible tells us. Israel's covenants, the covenant of Abraham and other covenants like that, some of them have not been fully fulfilled, like the Abrahamic covenant has not. Israel has never gotten all of the land promised to them under the Abrahamic covenant. I still believe that's coming during the millennial kingdom. But we're not to take those out of context and apply them wrongly. We are to use the New Testament doctrines supported and undergirded by the Old Testament statements and prophecies and promises. And that gives us a fullness and understanding. And we and that's so important. You know, I... Uh, Doctrine is a study of doctrine. You might say, oh, it's a doctrinal message. It's going to be deep. I'm going to count ceiling tiles in the church. Well, I understand, yes, it can be deep, and sometimes it can be a little tedious. But if you concentrate on the doctrines of the Bible and really study them and ask the Lord, Lord, make this exciting, it can be exciting. You know, not just pastors and not just people who go to seminary for 50 years they're not the only ones who should find doctrine exciting in the Bible. All of us should. So basically, let me just summarize this all together. Paul told Timothy to concentrate and to really have a good grasp of the doctrines that lead us to deeper faith. Not so much all of the repetitions of, of all of the genealogies in that important but not as important as the doctrines that bring us closer. Let me just uh, also say this too. The second part, though, is to be that testimony. Paul himself said a faithful saying. He says, when I go through the struggles, and as I'm learning, and as I'm growing closer to the Lord in long suffering, may that also be a benefit and a blessing to those around me. And so, fellow Christian, during this time when we are together with our families and away from society, let me encourage you, always have that kind word, always have that, um, that, that smile. Uh, if you're doing FaceTime on your, uh, on your phone, however you're doing it, if you're doing a Zoom, remember we're to lift each other up and to share our faithfulness to, to God, to others, so that they can have an example, just like Paul said he would do. Well, I hope that each and every one of you have a blessed day today and a great day today. And and it looks like here we got a little bit of cloud cover. Maybe we'll get a little rain. We still need some more rain. But uh, I just hope that your day is wonderful. And, and may God just grant you a couple wonderful little uh, blessings and what I would call the handfuls of purpose. And that comes all the way from, from the book of Ruth. Well, I'll talk to you later. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We do thank you for the opportunity meet together over the technology of this age and this day. And Lord, I just ask that as we live, go about our daily routines that have had to be adjusted, that we continue to look upwards and look towards you, that we do study, and that we focus especially on the doctrines that bring us closer to our walk with you. And may this time not be a time of torture or a time of of hardship, but may this be a time where we're refreshed and ready to go once all of the bands are lifted, once all of the social distancing is lifted and this pandemic is gone, and that we can continue to be the
the, the salt and the light in this world. We ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen.